Hey everybody, it's Monday, November 30th. This is Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. This is Floss Tube number 70. And this will be a special floss tube, not a special edition, but a special floss tube because I tried something new this time. I um, decided I wanted to try vlogging, which is basically just where you um, film like a series of clips throughout a certain period of time and then edit them all together and and upload the video so i took advantage of the four day weekend in the Amer in in the united states um for thanksgiving um i was off on thursday and friday of course so i took advantage of that four day weekend where i was going to be staying home and not leaving the house and not doing anything, um, and I was going um, to just be um, crafting and doing whatever I felt like all weekend. And I decided I would film that and show you guys. So um, I that will be that will be uh, the the bulk of the video. Um, but before I show you all of those clips that I've edited together, I just wanted to um, go over like a couple of things I had worked on before Thursday um, and just like show you guys a little bit of, of that stuff. Um, but most of my whips, my works in progress and my finishes, all of that is actually going to be in the vlog. Um, there is uh, a lot of quilting stuff in the vlog um, as well, but um, it's all kind of mixed in. It's like stitching quilts, stitching quilts. So just keep that in mind if you want to like fast forward through some of the quilting stuff. Um, there is stitchy stuff sprinkled in amongst all that. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure I mentioned at the very beginning of the video so that nobody would miss it. Um, because it's really exciting. So um, Abby at topknotstitcher.com, she's also on Flosstube as Top Knot Stitcher, and she's on Instagram as Top Knot Stitcher. She also has an Etsy store, but she has her own web domain that you should check out before you order anything from Etsy because she has more on her website. But um, anyway, so I've been shopping with Abby for most of this year. And, um, I think like maybe one of my first orders with her might've been like a market pre-order. So that would have been like in February and, um, she's just become like my favorite, um, place to go for cross stitch stuff. And I mention her a lot and I buy a lot of, um, things from her that I show you guys on my videos. So she's probably... Um, quite familiar to you guys, but um, Abby had reached out to me and said she would like to do another code with me. So I think like in July or August, we did like a 10% or a 15% off code um, for the month of, for that whole month. And um, she said she wanted to do that again, but she wanted to make it a little more special. So, um, and she said just as like a thank you for like supporting her her shop, she wanted to do um, the, another 15% off code for the month of December. But she also said that anyone who uses the code on her website can be entered into a drawing for a $50 gift card to her website. So um, if there's some things you were going to order anyway, you can get them from her for 15% off, but then you could be entered um, for a chance to win $50 to her shop. And that's um, going to be all in the drop box below. I'll put all the info uh, down there. But the code that we're going to use is KC girl 15 and I will attempt to edit that in here. So um, the code starts tomorrow, Tuesday, December 1st, and it is valid through December 24th because on Christmas day, December 25th, Abby is going to pick a winner as a little like Christmas surprise. And so if you place an order between December 1st and December 24th and you use my 15% off code, then you will be entered into the drawing for the $50 gift card. Um, you 
can use the code as many times as you want. Like usually I end up using, you know, placing like three or four different orders <laughs> myself um, when she has a code like that. But um, so you can use the code multiple times, but you'll only get one entry for the $50 gift card. So um, thank you, Abby, so much for doing that. Um, I'm really excited. And uh, just full disclosure, like Abby is sending me a gift card too as a thank you for just being, um, She's, I think she said just for being like a supporter of hers. And um, that's just so, that's so nice. It's so sweet. And I'm really excited. So um, go save 15%. I've talked about Abby's shop before. Um, what I really love is that she... Um, how, do, how did I say like she she curates um, like the best of the best I, I feel um, for cross stitch um, and then you don't have to weed through like thousands and thousands of items she's kind of like already like narrowed it down for you to like all the really good stuff um, and then the other thing that I love about her website is that anytime a new pattern comes out she puts it up for pre-order and I know she's not the only one that does that like I know other places do pre-order but I feel like she just makes it like really easy so like if um hello from Liz Matthews has a new pattern I know Abby has it for pre-order so the second like Liz shows it on her Instagram or her floss tube I can go to Abby's website and like buy it immediately before she even has it. Um, but then I don't have to try to remember like, okay, that comes out in a week or two and I need to like remember to go buy it. Like I don't, I can just like the second I see it, I can go buy it. And then when it's actually in the hands of the shops, like it just comes to me like magic. So um, that works really well for me. So I do a lot of pre-orders with Abby because um, she's good about like getting stuff up immediately. Um, okay, so I think that's enough gushing about Abby. She's the best. So go save 15% for 24 days in December and then on Christmas somebody is going to get a really, really nice Christmas present. Uh, so, okay, so let's get to like the, the stitching stuff. Um, I want to show you guys a couple things I worked on before I started filming my vlog and then you'll see all the things I worked on for the four day weekend. So um, let's see, I worked on Lindy Stitches Dumpster Fire Friends Forever and I am stitching this for my friend Amy Gable Stitcher and she's stitching this for me. So we'll both end up at the end with this piece but um, we aren't telling each other like what fabric we're using or what floss we're using. So um, we agreed like on our videos, we would just tell each other to look away um, so we could still show like our work, but that the other would still be surprised. So Amy, look away, please. Okay, <laughs> so here's where I've gotten on this. Um, and I, I can't really say much about it, but um, because Amy isn't looking, but she's listening. <laughs> so yeah, here's where I'm at. Um, this is stitching up really fast, so I'm hoping to get this done before Christmas. All right, Amy, you can look back, it's gone. Okay, so then um, we had a snow day, a little snow here in Colorado. So I got out my, my snow project, which is Mirabilia Santa's Magic and this is no joke it's ugh. I've stitched a few Mirabilia as well <laughs> I've finished one Mirabilia and I have started a few more I've worked on uh, quite a few and I've never had one with so much confetti so this is an older Mirabilia it's a night it's 1995 that it came out. Wow, that's that's um, one of her earlier designs for sure. Oh, it says right here is number 15. This was her 15th pattern. 
Um, so it's interesting to see like how she's evolved as a designer. Um, but I guess back then she really liked to like put a lot of confetti in her patterns. So um, this one's hard to stitch because it's just, you have to pay really, really close attention. You have to do a ton of counting and um, changing your color constantly. And then of course, on top of all that, like there's a bunch of crying as well. But I did, I did feel like I made like decent progress. I got mostly all of this um, gold done. And that's like three different shades of gold. So again, it was definitely confetti. And I'm glad that I made this my snow project because I'm forced to get it out even when I'm kind of dreading it. And I'm gonna like be able to chip away at it. Um, but I will say that I didn't, it didn't bother me as much this time. Like I, I felt like I was enjoying the pattern a little bit more because um one one or two sessions ago on this i hated it i was not having fun working on it um and then my last uh whip to show you before you see everything i stitched on in the in the vlog is um I started this little small, it's a shepherd's bush kit and it's called Mary B pin cushion. And it's gonna look like this. And it's, the kit has all the floss, the fabric, and this beautiful silk ribbon and all the beading too, to go around. Um, it's a 30 count weeks straw, I believe is the fabric. And it comes with um, silks for the stitching and I just have a little start on this one. Um, I'm, I'm following the directions and it says to use one strand of silk over two threads. On 30 count that's going to give a really thin coverage um, and I'm trying, I don't love the way it looks but I'm trying to just like embrace it like it's a primitive look, it's a primitive style, like it's going to be okay. I do like the fabric, like the color of the fabric a lot, but it's that old week. So it's like a really loose, um, 30 count, but I got a little start on that and I will, uh, I, I, I have every intention of finishing that up before Christmas. Okay. So those were the things I worked on before I started filming my vlog. Um, and let me see if there was anything else I wanted to show you like beforehand. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I worked on um, in vlog style and then I will come back at the end and show you a teeny tiny little amount of haul and talk about one book. So um, I'll see you guys in a minute, but enjoy my Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Here. Okay, Thanksgiving vacation is officially starting. It's 3 p.m. Wednesday, November 25th. Our work shut down two hours early. I'm not driving. I'm in the parking garage filming this before <laughs> I take off. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. We're gonna do this vlog series over the Thanksgiving weekend. At least we're gonna try. We'll see how it turns out. Um, why am I talking about myself in the third person? I have no idea. Um, but I'm just super excited, a four day weekend, and it starts now, going home. And I think I'm gonna pop some bubbly. If I remember, I'll show you guys what I'm drinking. I'll see you soon, bye. Okay friends, so we finished the bubbly. We've moved on to the next bottle. Um, and I'm ready to, to stitch. Sitting down, stitching. Got my my comfy Christmas festive leggings on. Got our tree, um, not decorated yet. Tomorrow I'm going to put up Christmas decorations. I'll show you guys how that turns out. Um, and I am working on Hello from Liz Matthews, first day of Christmas sampler. And I am doing the tree, however, I'm doing more the colors of the sampler. Um, they're, so, oh, sorry about this glare. Um, they're mostly the same, but um, for example, the leaves here, she does 
like here it's a darker green and here it's a light green and then for the lighter green she did like this white so I'm doing more these colors but on the doing the tree and um, she calls for NPIs I'm substituting uh, mostly color and cottons that are in kind of the same tone and I'm stitching this on 40 count picture of this plus velt. So it's gonna be itty bitty. Um, and here's where I'm starting from. This was uh, the last two nights I've worked on this. So this is what I've accomplished in two nights. Um, and here's where I'm starting tonight. So I will film an update before I go to bed and show you guys how far I get tonight. I'm really excited. Um, and I love this fabric. It's 40 count picture of this plus velt. It's wonderful. So I will check in with you guys later. Bye. Okay, so getting ready to go to bed. But here is how far I got tonight on Hello from Liz Matthews' first day of Christmas. And I think that's pretty good progress. Um, I think I could finish this in like maybe two or three days of more intense stitching. It's really overall a pretty small pattern, but I am going to start a new project tomorrow for the um, Thanksgiving weekend of Stay Home and Stitch for the holidays, stitch along that I am co-hosting with my friend Victor. Um, his Instagram is flawed sir, and we are hosting a Black Friday sale and a stay home and stitch so so um yeah there's that and then i did want to show a little bit of uh, what i've been reading tonight so i know some of you aren't here for the book talk so i will keep this very brief um this is the third book in the holly back holly black trilogy the folk of the air the first book is the cruel prince the second book is the wicked king and the third book is The Queen of Nothing. And I am about halfway done. I actually am stopping right here on book two. So about halfway through with this. Um, it's only like 300 pages. It's actually really, really short. And I'm reading it really fast. So uh, it reads really fast. It's like, I feel like um, pretty big font. Lots of dialogue spaced pretty big so it's uh it's reading pretty quickly this is a signed edition <laughs> i think i got it at barnes and noble like when it first came out um so yeah that's what i'm reading hoping to finish that hopefully tomorrow or the next day so i can start a new book with my friend andrea stitchy bookworm we're gonna do an um we're gonna we're, we're usually reading a book together um but we took a break, so uh, I'm ready. I was told her I was going to read this really quick, and then we're going to start something together. So hopefully you'll be seeing that um, shortly in this video. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday, Thanksgiving in America, and um, I'll check back in then. Good night. Okay, there's Linky. First order of business today is unpacking all these Christmas totes, putting the decorations up. Got my coffee. Ready to go. It's Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. One more box left. This, These are all ornaments in these boxes. Um, I've uncovered some more treasures. This one. This is my favorite. Um, this is not how these will be displayed, by the way. <laughs> I'm just, as I'm unpa unpacking the boxes, I'm just setting everything out. And then, then we'll decide where, where it goes. So anyway, just, uh, just a progress report. I will be back. Okay, so I'm going to pick up our Thanksgiving meal because... I ain't cooking this year. And I thought on the way, I would stop and show you guys the um, 
the amazing view that I drive by every day on my way to work. Uh, it's like a mile from my house. Okay, so actually there's no one out here. Because <laughs> I am usually would park over there. There's a dog park right there. But I'm across the busy road. Because there's so many people. It's a gorgeous lake right here that people like to walk around. But you can't have dogs, so I never have walked around it. It's actually a reservoir that we drink from. Or we get our drinking water from. So, no dogs allowed. Lincoln always wants to go to that lake because he loves the water but he can't go so um there's an underpass right here where you can walk under the road to get over to the dog park when the parking's full but yeah i drive this is my view i drive towards these mountains every day these are called the flat irons hey bobby you got your cute scarf on. Yeah. You don't like it? Sister, sister, there were never such devoted sisters. So, we're decorating. Um, this tree is really tiny, it's only four feet tall. <laughs> I have some cross stitch ornaments on here. There's a Mill Hill Santa. Um, I have some Christmas story ornaments. There's a set of three. And I can't remember, they're from an Etsy seller, but I can't remember exactly who it was. I have another Mill Hill Santa here. Um, a Mill Hill Mary Moose. I don't know why that's not focusing. There we go. And then a third Santa. So those are the Renaissance Santas. I did all three of them. So those are all the cross stitch ornaments I think that I own. We usually do a real tree and we usually do a big one. Like six, seven, eight feet. But this year I had to get this little rainbow tree because it's so cute. It's really small. You guys, this is my favorite, favorite part. She's so badass. And she just absolutely guts him. And he didn't even do anything wrong. But she doesn't know that. Tell him, girl. You tell him. So, my boyfriend won't even watch this movie with me because I sing the entire thing and quote the entire thing. It drives him nuts. Um, anyway, so here's the Christmas decoration. So you already saw the tree with the cross stitch. And then over here on the mantle. Do, 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 do. So I'm not going to show, like, I'm probably not going to show everything that I decorated today, but just all the cross stitch for sure. So I like how the mantle turned out. I love my fireplace. Let me, like, get back so you guys can see. Um, yeah, love it. So anyway, this is Heartstring Samplery. Baby, it's cold outside. Um, and I finished this on a sled. I think maybe it was at, I might've gotten it at Target or maybe it was Michael's or Joanne's. Um, and I just, you know, mounted it on some homespun and glued it on this, this sled. And it's really cute. Um, Snow Queen, oh, look how good she looks. She's, she's the focal point this year. <laughs> So Mirabilia Snow Queen, um, stitched exactly as charted except for the hair. She's a blonde um, in the chart and I changed her hair and made her redhead. Um, but otherwise I kept everything the same and she stitched on 32 count Pollywog Princess from uh, 
hand-dyed fabrics from Stephanie. And then I've got, this was a, I think Little House Needleworks or Country Cottage. I get them mixed up because they look exactly the same to me. Um, it's on 32 count petite point um, gray with little polka dots. And I think I used all the called four colors, but it was, it's been a while since I stitched that. So um, what else do we have? Let me, I'm gonna pause and take you back to another area. So on the other side of the room, um, I have, this is um, an Etsy seller called Up To X Stitch. You can't find this chart on Etsy anymore because I think Disney kind of got onto her. Um, but um, if you message her, she will still sell you this chart. Um, this actually was a chart that like reignited my love of cross stitch. I saw it on Reddit and I needed it and I needed to stitch it and I did stitch it. It only calls for three colors. It's stitched on 14 count Ada and I absolutely love it. Um, this is Little House Needleworks or Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, Merry Christmas, my dear. It's on that same fabric, the 32 count petite point gray fabric. Um, and I'll, I'm pretty sure I did all the called for colors and it's just so cute. And I got this frame at, I think I got it at Marshall's or TJ Maxx. Really cute. Okay, so here's another little entry. This is a little table in the entryway. Um, this is a pattern from Veil Stitchery, V-A-L-E, Veil Stitchery, on Etsy. And it's stitched on 14 count red Ada. And then over here, I've got the Scarlet House, my gift to thee, which I stitched with my friend Victor, flawed sir, on Instagram. And he actually gifted me the pattern and all the floss and everything for it, like the fabric and the floss. Um, and then we stitched that together. And then, and I love, I love it. Um, and then this is um, Bindi Stitchy Hildy's, a, a very Hildy Yule. I think, or a very Yule Hildy. I always get it mixed up. I think it's a very Hildy Yule. And I love the finishing I did on this. Um, this was like a 32 count fabric I, I dyed myself. Um, but look at this little palm. I think I got it at Michael's and I love it. Okay, last but not least, Little House Needleworks. I know this one is Little House Needleworks, not Country Cottage. Um, Lantern Lane and this is stitched on I think it yeah that's one over okay so this is I'm pretty sure it's a 40 count picture this plus legacy I believe it was um, and I think it's all the called for colors except for I changed I think for the snow it wasn't showing up so I made it a brighter white I think it was, it called for this color, which wasn't showing well, so I think I changed, I think, but it was a couple, it was three years ago, so. Um, and then this isn't specifically Christmas, but it feels a little bit Christmassy, so I'm keeping it out. Um, and this is Stacy Nash, Cherry Hollow Farm. It's something about that red house, it feels like Christmas to me. And I just love this so much, and every time I walk by it, it makes me really, really happy. So I left it out. Um, and I think that is all of the cross stitch, all the Christmassy cross stitch, but I have um, a couple of things I'm almost done with, like some smalls, so I might be able to um, put a few more things out before the end of the year. And I'll let you know when I do. Okay, friends, I am so excited because it is time to start the Black Friday Sal that I'm hosting with Victor, uh, Flawed Sir on Instagram. This is our stay home and stitch for the holidays Sal and um, Black Friday Sal. Basically, we're not going out for Thanksgiving or Black Friday. We're staying home and we're stitching. And uh, Victor came up with the idea that uh, we would stitch on 
either on black fabric or with black floss. And so I decided I'm going to finally start. I've had this kitted up for a while. Mo Modern Folk Embroidery um, Real Comfort, a Jane Austen sampler. It's a good size, 193 by 193, but it's not a lot of like really dense stitching. I think actually, I really do think it'll stitch really quick. I really do. Um, I am stitching this on a fabric called Beige Desert. It's a 38 count, which I don't think I've ever used. Um, it's by Barbaral Fabric, which I think she's an Eastern European dyer. Um, and I got this somewhere on Etsy. I don't even remember where. It's a really pretty, like, rosy pink. Um, and the floss I'm using, I got from Stitchy Box. This is an exclusive. Um, it is a Dinky Dyes vintage newsprint. And it's a, it's like a charcoal black. It's, of course, just absolutely fabulous. And I have two skeins, but I'm really thinking I might be able to get away with just one because I, like I said, I mean, who knows? We'll see. It's just, there's not a, a ton of stitching and this is, um, I think this is a 12 strand, but I might, uh, that might not, <laughs> that might not be true. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, really excited to start that. And I will check in with you guys later and let you see where, um, where I've gotten. Good morning. Morning, friends. So, <laughs> got a little snuggle. Someone's real snuggly this morning. Um, okay, so I, I just woke up. I just only had a sip of my coffee, so I'm still trying to get it together this morning. Um, I wanted to show you where I stopped last night. Um, I went to bed at like 1 a.m. And uh, my boyfriend was still up like playing music. And it was just a late night, so I didn't feel like filming my, my update last night. Um, so I made really good progress, though, on my modern folk embroidery Real Comfort Jane Austen sampler. Um, <laughs> I stitched on this all day yesterday for the Black Friday stitch along. Now today is actually, whoa, hey, today's Friday. <laughs> so I actually really need to be hitting this hard today. But I'm really happy with how far I got. I feel like I got really good progress on this. Um, this is, this fabric is by Barbaral Creations and it's called... Uh, Sorry, I had to turn around and look. It's called Beige Desert. Beige Desert. The sun's shining. So, I'm um, stitching it with Dinky Dyes Black Floss in the color newsprint. And I'm really happy with the coverage. This was a 38 count fabric, which is a little unusual. But the Dinky Dyes Silk has a nice... Um, it's plush. It's, it's much... It's noticeably thicker than like a one strand of DMC. And so I think the coverage is really good and I'm really happy with the coverage. I'm happy with how it's looking. I'm happy with how fast it's stitching. I feel like it's coming together really, really quickly. Um, this is basically the far side. There's like, um, there's just one line of the outer border. And then, but that, that that's the end you know, of the piece. So it's about, this is a f 11 by 11 Q snap. So it's gonna be like maybe 13 by 13 ish when it's all done, it's square, the piece is square. So there's that. And then I did read yesterday quite a bit. I have about, I think 70 pages left. This book's about 304 pages and I stopped on 235. By 234 so yeah I've got just about 70 pages I might that's might be what I tackle this morning like just finish this finish this up because it's a short book but like I said these these books go really really fast um I was thinking about that this morning it's it's like 
whoever it's like a book that's been edited down to like just just the plot <laughs> there's just so it's so fast paced it, there's so much action and it's just boom 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 there's no like exposition or um like let's deep dive deep into getting to know these characters i mean you do get to know the characters but it's just um it's it's edited to like be very very tight and um it makes the book fast and fun to read but I think that's why they're not like maybe five star reads for me I just wanted a little more I always wanted just a little more and I do remember when I finished this book I felt like oh huh that's it because this is a reread I'm, I'm reading I read these a year ago um and I remember a lot of the reviews were like, I just, it wasn't bad. I just wanted more. Um, and I feel like that's probably going to be the case again. Although this time I think on the reread, I am enjoying it just a smidge more. So anyway, um, I think I'm going to finish that up this morning so I can start a second, a, a new book. Um, and I'll show you that when I get there. And I'm definitely going to be stitching some more on my Black Friday sow because today is the day. So I can't wait to show you guys how far I get on that. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. So it's like five o'clock on Friday and I haven't done anything today. I haven't stitched. I just came down to my craft cave, but I think I'm going to do a little quilting, but I haven't yet. I wanted to show you guys some stuff I've been working on. Um, I've spent the entire day um, cleaning up and organizing my room upstairs. So, um, I will sit and stitch soon, but I thought I wanted to just get a little sewing in first because I'm close to getting finished with this quilt top. So this is, um, a pattern called magic stars by Anila Hui. I think I got it on Etsy. And the reason I bought this pattern is because all it takes is a layer cake. A layer cake is, um, 10 inch pre-cut squares of a fabric line um, and it usually has um, 42 or 44 pieces of the 10 inch squares um, and most patterns like if you search for like layer cake pattern you're going to find a bunch of patterns where you need to buy additional fabric to complete so like you need to buy two yards of a white or a gray or something like that and this was the first time I had found a pattern where it just used a layer cake, nothing else. It uses 42 squares from your layer cake. Um, you sew them in a, in a way that there's no waste and also um, really easy. So each 10 inch square, you just have to cut, you just have to make two cuts and that's it. So it was actually really fast to cut the pieces. Um, and then when I started to sew, like they're coming together really quickly. So, and it makes a good size throw. So it's going to be 52 by 60, 52 inches by 60. It's decent size. Um, this fabric line is Moda Twilight. It's really pretty like periwinkle, coral, salmon, um, minty color and like some charcoal. So um, it's a, a really pretty fabric line and I had a layer cake and I've had it for a while and I just didn't know what to do with it. So you can see I got the initial blocks. Um, well, I don't know. I guess they're not done. I was going to say done, but they're not. Um, because I think a final block is going to be the four squares. So I got all the squares done and then I've sewed them up into pairs and now I need to sew the pairs together. And then I need to sew the rows together. Um, it's really coming together quickly and I just need to get it done. So that's on the ticket for this weekend. And I'll show you guys the final project or product, of course, when I'm done. Um, and I want to show you some of my other quilt projects um, just because. So, but this is the one I'm going to be working on first. And then I really want to work on a Christmas quilt. So I'll show you what I have in mind. So another thing I wanted to show you guys, 
um, is my pile of recent finishes that I need to fully finish. And you have not seen a couple of these. Um, these are things that I, I don't know, maybe I'll do this weekend. I can't promise. Um, so I finished since last video, I finished this Mill Hill. Um, this will be a quick finish. All I do is glue some felt down to the back <laughs> and, uh, put it like a ribbon as a hanger. These are nice, quick finishes. This is, um, what was a Roveris kit and it comes with like the ribbon and the, the charms. It comes with everything that you need to finish this. So the kit comes with the fabric and all of the finishing. All I had to provide were the three DMC colors. And um, I have to admit, I was a little surprised when I pulled these colors because to me, this kit looks like red, black, and white. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, I think it's just a, a weird off picture yeah <laughs> but when I pulled the colors I actually thought you know what I like these colors a lot so I didn't go and change it I actually used the called for so gotta finish that um I think you saw this last video as a finish this is wild violet cross stitch um witch house in Salem it's super teeny tiny and I'm hoping I think this little square frame. I think it'll fit. So probably what I'm going to do with that. You saw this. This is M. Kissa Creations Witch Shoes. It's on 32 count Copper Penny by Witch Elt. The Wild Violet is on a 25 count. It's one over one. So it's itty bitty stitches. One over one on a hand dyed or an under the sea fabrics by Leslie. And um this one, I think you saw it last video. I think I had just finished it. This is Primitive Hair Lizzie Borden on 32 count fabric that I dyed myself. And then I don't think you've seen this one. This is Witchy Stitcher Ouija Board and it's on 28 count Monaco that I dyed myself. So those are all the things that I could potentially be finishing. All right, Quilt Top is done. I really am quite, quite pleased with how it came out. Um, tomorrow I will pick a backing fabric. I actually don't know quite yet just what. I'm really hoping I have something in my fabric stash that will work because I certainly am not going out to the store to get it. So I'm going to figure something out. Um, so I will do a quilt sandwich with batting and backing. I'm going to do some really simple straight line quilting on this one. And then also need to figure something out for binding. Also don't know what I'm doing for that. Um, but I think I'll be fine. I think I, I will be able to find something. So quilt top is done. Really happy with how that turned out. And now finally <laughs> I can go stitch. It's, um, it's like 8 p.m. So I haven't stitched at all today. So I'm excited to kind of sit down and relax um, finally. <laughs> so I'll check in later. I apologize for the poor lighting, but um, I came in here to grab my next book because I finished The Queen of Nothing from Holly Black. And um, I actually really enjoyed this on reread. So I read the series like a year ago. And like I told you guys earlier, I was, um, I, I really enjoyed the series when I read it. Um, but I did feel like it was just missing a little something. Um, and I, I reread it because something about like this time of year, I think in the, I read it this same time of year last year. So maybe that's it. Um, there's not really any specific season in this book, but it just kind of feels like a fall winter book to me. So anyway, um, I really enjoyed it and I still recommend this trilogy um, to anybody who, who's been interested in, in my talking about it. Um, but it's not like, it's not going to blow your mind. It's not, it's not going to be like the best thing ever, but it's enjoyable. I mean, I reread it. I rarely reread and certainly not just a year later. Usually it's a couple of years later. So, I mean, it was fun. 
quick, fun read. So, um, but I did, um, I did like it better this, this round. I felt like I wasn't left, um, wanting more. I, I felt, I felt more satisfied, um, with it. So I don't know if that was just because on reread things came together a little easier for me or if, um, you know, I was just in a different headset mindset. I don't know. I, I, I liked it. Um, but my friend Andrea and I have picked our next book and we are going to read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. So this book, um, I really don't know much about it, but, um, my understanding is, um, so there, I, I read the book last year. Um, I read a book called Carry On with Andrea, um, and absolutely loved it. And Carry On was, um, the brainchild of, of this book. This book came first. Um, so this book is about a girl who writes fan fiction for, a universe, um, that's based, um, somewhat around like a Harry Potter kind of, um, series. So, um, she's like a super fan of this series called Simon Snow, which is Harry Potter, um, essentially. But she, um, so again, I, I haven't read the book yet, so I don't really know. But, um, anyway, in this book, this girl writes fan fiction for this universe, um, this book series. And then I guess the author Rainbow Rowell actually was inspired to actually start writing books, um, that she had created slash invented for this book. So, um, this book came first, so I'm going a little backwards here, but Carry On was still super fun and super enjoyable without having ever read this. Um, but Andrea and I both wanted to read, um, this. So, uh, there is not a synopsis on the back. Let's check in here. All right. So, uh, what do we have? A coming of age tale, a fam, fan fiction, family, and love. Um, this book maybe I think might be considered new adult. Um, she's in college, so it's not young adult, but you know, it's still a little young for like contemporary adult fiction. Um, so Kath is a Simon Snow fan. Okay, the whole world is a Simon Snow fan, but for Kath, being a fan is her life, and she's really good at it. She and her twin sister, Wren, ensconced themselves in the Simon Snow series when they were just kids. It's what got them through their mother leaving. Blah, 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 blah. Now that they're going to college, Wren has told Kath she doesn't want to be roommates. Kath is on her own, completely outside of her comfort zone. Blah, blah, blah. Does she want to move on if it means leaving Simon Snow behind? So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. This is a contemporary, which I usually read more like fantasy stuff. So, um, it looks like it's about 400 and something pages, but Rainbow Rowell's, uh, books, at least when I read Carry On, it read really fast. So it's just, I mean, look big font, lots of space. Should be a quick read. Um, Carry On was absolutely hilarious. So I'm hoping this book will be really funny too. And I'm really excited. So there's Simon and Baz from Simon Snow. Oh, look how cute Baz is. And then I'm guessing that's Kath and I don't know, love interest here. Um, highly recommend carry on highly 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 recommend it Let's see what i think about fangirl i'm really excited to read this one i'll check in later okay so it's 10 minutes to midnight and um, i just got really tired so i'm calling it a night um i didn't get as much stitching done today as i would have liked but it's okay it wasn't for lack of opportunity i just was doing other stuff all day and I didn't sit down to stitch until mm, it might have been like 8 30 um so it was pretty late so I mean I think I, I I got really nice progress for um how long I stitched but you know could have been one of those things where I might have 
um, sat and stitched all day long and I could have really, really gotten a ton more done, but that's okay. Um, and I don't really know, um, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. Also, I'm not sure what my plans are. I'm just going to kind of work on what I want, probably do some quilting, stitching, but, um, we'll see. We'll see what I get done Saturday and Sunday. Um, oh, as I say that, I just remembered I'm going to work on something else tomorrow, um, for a little while. So, but this, I think this will still get some love. So, um, regardless, you will, you will be seeing this again and we'll see where I got. So, um, it's really, really fun to stitch and it's stitching up really pretty, pretty fast. Um, but with these little leaves in the border, I certainly was paying really, really close attention. And I think so far we're good. I don't think I've made any mistakes, but, um, I got a little nervous last night when it's getting really late and I was like, you know what? I need to put this down before I really mess something up. <laughs> um, today I was looking, I noticed the dates at the top, the 817 and 2017, um, which, you know, when this pattern came out, that made sense and that was cute, but, um, I, I don't really want to stitch 2017 on, on this now. So, um, but I also don't think 2020 would make any sense or 2021. Um, so if, if that's when I actually finish this. So, um, I'm thinking maybe we'll just do Jane Austen's, um, date of birth and year of death as the, the numbers at the top. If someone has a, a better idea, let me know, but I think that's what I'll be doing. Um, but I'm loving this. It, it's really just, it's really fun to stitch. It's really nice. And I'm really happy with how it's looking. Um, this fabric at this time of night is, is not, Ooh, Oh, I don't know if it's going in and out for you, but on my end, it's going from accurate to really cool. Um, I don't know if it's doing the same on your side. Um, it doesn't like to photograph this time of night, but in the morning it looks, in daylight it looks pretty accurate, but it's like a, a brown pink. Um, so I also started Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I read, I think, what did I, I read to page 34, chapter four. It's just got like a, a nice little start. A um, little early yet to have much of an opinion at all on this, but um, so far it's fine. It's it's good. I just, it, it yeah, I'll let you know after I read more. So um, I am off to bed. I am very tired. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Woohoo. It's 8.30 and I have a finished quilt. Tomorrow I'll run it through the wash so it'll get all nice and crinkly, but it's done. Um, this took up a, a good portion of my day. Um, it's 8.30 and I'm just gonna sit down to stitch. But you know, I didn't start working on this until well after lunch, it was probably like 2 p.m. or later, so. Um, I don't know. It probably took me five to six hours to quilt this, to do the quilt sandwich, quilt it, and then bind it. But I'm happy. It's done. I like it. And I think it'll look even better after I wash it and get it all crinkled up. So we've accomplished something this weekend. We've got to finish. All right. So I'm calling it a night, Saturday night about 11 o'clock. I need to get myself back on like a, a normal schedule because I, you know, I got to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> so tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow is my last day to get things done. And there's a lot of things I didn't get to, but, um, you know, I still, I still did some good things this, this weekend. So it's all good. Um, but hoping to be productive tomorrow and, uh, and have quite a bit to show you guys, but um, I think I made good progress on my piece tonight. Um, so this is the Real Comfort Jane Austen Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I 
I've done all of this. I'm just about to start on this first bird. Um, and I've done some of the words here. So um, I feel like it's stitching up pretty fast. I think these houses are going to be a little bit deceptive where, you know, I look at them and I'm like, oh, this should be pretty quick. But I think they'll, I think they'll take a hot minute, but they shouldn't be too bad. And then, you know, all these letters down here should go pretty quick. Um, the vine is, it, it has a big impact. And it's really pretty. Um, it's not difficult to stitch. You just have to pay really, really close attention. So, um, I so far do not believe I've made any counting errors and I'm double checking myself constantly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with, with where I'm, I'm at on this. So the, the first bird is going to be right in here. And, um, I didn't start that other project I had mentioned. Time kind of got away from me today, but maybe tomorrow I'll try to get to that. Um, we'll see. But yeah, this one, I don't, I, I don't think I'm going to be putting it away anytime soon. I don't necessarily think I can get a finish, but not ready to stop yet. Just not ready to stop yet. So I think this one will continue for a little while. Um, so there's that. And then I read, I started Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And I read, I think I stopped right at 100. Yeah. I stopped on chapter 10. I read 100 pages of this. So um, 70 pages this morning. And I, I wanted to read some more tonight, but it got a little bit late. Um, but this is, uh, it's really easy. It's really easy to read. It's just, um, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm finding it to be a quick read. So it's about 430 pages. Um, I started it last night and I only got a little start last night and then I've already read a hundred pages. So I think, um, with a little effort, this would be, I could finish this really quickly. I honestly should have probably read about 50 more pages today, but I'm not. Um, so maybe I can make up some of that tomorrow, but, um, so far, um, not a ton to say about this. Uh, the main character, Kath is, um, away at college. She's going to Nebraska University in Lincoln and she's from Omaha. So she's away from home, um, but still in a little college town in the Midwest. Um, and she is a total introvert, antisocial, um, doesn't want to go out, doesn't want to make friends, just wants to hang out with her online friends and do her online things. She's a, a fan fiction writer. Um, uh, and that's kind of her life. And I'm just relating to Kath just a little too much right now. So this book is, um, I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, yeah, the, the whole like stay home and, and talk to my online friends. Um, I get it, Kath. I, I really do get it. So yeah, that's what, uh, that's what's going on with this book. It's good so far. I, I am enjoying it. All right, I'm going to bed. I'll check in tomorrow. See you guys later. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am down in the craft cave, and I'm doing a little experiment today. Got my morning coffee. Um, so we... Okay, so... I bought these. At, God, I, it's got to be at least, like, probably 10 years or more ago. I got these in my scrapbooking days. Um, the brand is Sukaniko. And these are walnut crystal dyes that you can spray, right? So it's a walnut ink antiquing solution. Um, prepared from walnut ink crystals. So it should be relatively permanent. And this came as a four pack, right? So terracotta, java, eucalyptus and walnut ink. And I found these recently when I was cleaning, um, like just going through scrapbooking stuff and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, and I thought, I wonder, I wonder if I could use those for like fabric dyeing. So, um, this is an experiment. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Like you guys are on this journey with me. This could go horribly awry 
or it could be absolutely amazing. I'm putting on some gloves because this stuff will stain. Um, that's the other thing is this is so old. I have no idea if it loses like anything over time. So we're going to see. Um, this is just some like scrap fabric that I was actually going to throw away. So um, this is just to protect um, everything from staining. And um, this is just a, again, a, a little piece of scrap fabric. Um, so I'm going to like just make sure these are primed and ready. And also just to kind of get an idea. Wow, see how intense that is? Um, that is terracotta. So again, just priming these and making sure I, you know, just kind of know what color they are. This is walnut ink. Looks pretty much the same. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> um, this one's Java. Woo! That one's almost black. And then this is eucalyptus. I'm guessing it's a little bit green. I'm going to spray this one over here. Wow. Okay. So those are more pigmented than I expected. <laughs> um, but I'm glad I put this down because you can see those will definitely stain. Um, what I think I'm going to do is spray let sit for a while and then go rinse. Hopefully I lose some of this with a rinse and then, um, and then dry it and kind of see what we get. Um, I think I'm just going to play a little bit. I, I actually, my game plan, my game plan is changing a little bit because I really didn't know these were going to come out so intense. I thought I sprayed those pretty close. I think it says to spray, well, it doesn't say on here, but I think you're supposed to spray them from like, you know, eight to 10 inches away. So it's a little less intense. What I'm more nervous about is like kind of the splatter effect. Um, I, I don't know. We're going to, we're going to see. So my original thought, look, it soaked right through. Um, my original thought on these was I was going to try one piece of fabric dry. This is like a 35 count weeks or witch elk. No, it's a, it's a witch elk. It's a 35 count witch elk like cream. And then I was going to try this piece of, I believe it's 30 count, um, wet. Um, and now that I see how intense this is, I think I'm going to wet the witch elk as well because whoo Nelly. Um, so, okay. Um, I don't have anything particular in mind for these. This one's already, like I said, already wetted. I think I'm going to do the traditional, the walnut ink. And I'm going to back up a little bit so we get a, a, yeah, that's still, I'm a good foot away and you can still see that is intense. And unfortunately, it's also splattering, which I'm not excited about. I'm going to do eucalyptus, which is that greeny color. I think this could come out really cool. I just, I don't know. We'll see. If it doesn't come out cool, I'll live. Sorry, I shook you guys. Um, kind of wondering if I should just stop there. But you know what, let's, let's go all in. Let's do some terracotta. Okay, now that I've backed up, you can definitely see that color is actually terracotta. <laughs> and it covered everything. Oh, man. Well, hopefully some of this washes out and we get like just a nice muted natural color. That's my hope. Okay, I'm going to go set this one in the sink, but I am going to go wet the witch out. So I'll be back and I'll cut this so you don't have to sit and watch. Okay, I'm back. Um, and I also have an old towel that I don't care about underneath this, um, <laughs> this scrap fabric. Um, and I'm, and uh, that's probably a good thing. So, okay. Um, you can see it's already like, it's picking up some stuff. Look, just from underneath. 
from where I sprayed before. Hmm. Okay, this ink is no joke, guys. I actually wish I had had even a bigger uh, area that I had covered because this is in probably misting all over my floor, although I, I can't obviously see anything. Anyway, all right, we're going to do Java, which is that almost black. And I think I'm just going to hit a couple spots there. Whew. I really hope this washes down because this is really pigmented. All right, this one's walnut ink, the traditional. And now that I see this, I don't think I'm going to let this, I was gonna let it soak for maybe like 30 minutes, but I really don't think it needs it. Um, I'm gonna do a little eucalyptus. Hopefully once I rinse it out, it's not all splattered like how it's looking right now because I really don't like that. I don't know why I just did so much eucalyptus. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to just go rinse these like right now because I really feel like this pigment is a an immediate set. Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm going to go rinse them right now and then I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to dry them live <laughs> so we can see how these turn out so I got the got the dryer going I'll be back in a second okay so I'm back you guys are gonna laugh <laughs> it's rinsed right out so wow look <laughs> almost completely gone um there's like some left there so Actually, there's a lot left down there. So yeah, actually, I didn't want that much of an effect. Um, I didn't want to lose that much. This one, um, this was the first one I sprayed, and it sat a little longer, and I think we got a good, like, there's still a good bit on here. Um, so I think I will iron this one. But the other one, I actually think I'm going to respray because I lost everything when I did that. So isn't that fascinating? You saw how intense those colors were. They washed right out, right out. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna actually let these sit a little bit. And the other thing you might've noticed is they really did wash out where they're not, um, they're not the, this splatter that we have this first round. So I'm just spraying all of them except for the Java, that black one. I'm a little scared of that one. Okay, so I'm actually going to let this one sit um, in the sink for a minute. And then I'm going to, well, now I'm looking at this other one and I just, I think I lost a little too much on this one because when I dry this, it'll get even lighter and it's, it's pretty much just a really subtle, so... I think I'm gonna respray this one too. Like I said, this is an experiment. And so I learned, so I got really scared of this dye. I immediately rinsed it out and that was a mistake. <laughs> so let's try this again. All right, I'm doing Java, that really dark one. I don't know. I, I have no, if you can't tell, I have no real technique here. I'm just, I'm hoping for just a really cool modeled effect at the end. I'm going to do all four colors on this one. <laughs> Making the biggest mess. Now that I know these uh, will rinse out, you can see I'm getting much closer to the fabric this time. All right, so I'm going to let these sit for... I don't know, 20 minutes. Let's say 20 minutes. I think I still think 30 is going to be too much. Let's let these sit for 20 minutes and let's see. Let's see what happens in the end. All right, I'm back. So I let these soak a good 20, 30 minutes. And you can see we definitely got more. Well, I hope you can see we got more color. 
to these. Um, now these will lighten up a little bit as they dry, but we definitely have more tone. Um, but the, but regardless, like it, it, the vast majority still washed out. There's like some dark bits there. I think this was the one where I used like the, the really dark one, the Java. And, um, so, uh, but this will lighten up a lot when I dry it. And, um, this one looks really nice. It's like a really pretty parchment. I hope it doesn't lighten up too much because I actually really like the way this one's looking. Um, one other thing to note is these were different fabrics, right? This one is a Witchell and this one is a Zweigart. So, um, and this was a 35 count, I think, and this was a 30 count. So, you know, they're going to take the dye differently. Um, so when I dye fabric, I like to actually dry it with my dryer. So, or I mean my iron, um, because if you do this, then you're going to get, um, a really smooth piece of fabric. You, you can certainly like lay these out to air dry. Um, but I like to do it this way. That's fabric lint. That's not dye. <laughs> that's from my, <clears throat> my towel. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I like to do it this way because then you get a really nice smooth piece of fabric and you can also like, whoops, <laughs> Um, you get a little bit more instant gratification because you can kind of see how it looks right away because I don't know if, um, I know some of you haven't dyed fabric, but when you dye fabric, um, you, uh, it, it, it lightens a ton. I'm getting snagged on. I, I actually zigzag stitch so that I wouldn't get too many loose bits, but I've got a couple and they're getting stuck and I can't pull them loose. Um, so that's another tip before you dye any fabric, make sure you do like a zigzag stitch on any loose ends because it will be a total mess when you're done. I promise you. Um, if you don't do that, <laughs> this is drying really pretty, but again, it's, it's going to lighten even more. It's still not completely dry. So, um, I like to dry with an iron. Now the secret to this, I usually don't have this much trouble, but these little bits keep getting stuck on my iron. I'm actually going to cut these off. So the secret is you don't want to leave the iron sitting on the fabric. Um, it'll scorch. And I've had that happen the first few times I tried dyeing and I didn't know, um, and I left the iron like sitting in one area of the fabric for too long so that it would dry. And it did. It did dry, but it also scorched my fabric. And then I had these beautiful iron holes on my fabric, which was, as you can imagine, not a good look. So, ah, there we go. <laughs> So just keep the, I, I have it on the hottest setting. I have it on like cotton linen, no steam. I have the steam off because it's going to steam itself because it's wet, right? So um, this is just something I've picked up from all of my fabric dyeing experiments is this is how I like to dry my fabric. It's, um, you can lay out a wet piece of fabric to dry, but it's going to be super, 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 super wrinkly when you're done. So I personally love to dry it this way because it irons it and it dries it really quick. And so you can see, even though I did a zigzag stitch, I'm still getting a few loose fibers, but that's because I didn't zag, zigzag close enough to my edge, but it's still no big deal. If you don't do a zigzag stitch, you will have a mess. Ask me how I know. All right. So I think this is dry. I have gloves on because, um, even after a, a really thorough rinse, you're gonna, you're still gonna have some, uh, you'll get some staining on your fingers. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty dry. So I don't know if you can tell, but it definitely lightened up, but we still get that beautiful modeling 
Um, but it definitely lightened up. And I can't tell, oh, it's not completely dry. Um, I can't remember which side I sprayed. I mean, I shouldn't say I can't remember. I have no way to know which side I sprayed. Um, so I guess I would just like kind of look and decide which, which side I like the best. Um, but wow. So <laughs> I would not have expected after that crazy, crazy look when I first sprayed that dye that it would fade to just a really, really pretty, really subtle modeling, but really pretty. I hope it's showing up okay. There's like fluorescent lighting down here. So hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys can see that, but it's a really, really, really subtle. Um, I can't pick out any of the colors. So I use, I think on this one, I use three of them. I use terracotta, walnut, and eucalyptus. I don't see any green, so I'm not getting any of the eucalyptus. Um, you know, I see some darker bits, but no distinct color. It's really just a really pretty mottled color. So very interesting. It's funny too, because um, you, I would have been really hard pressed to spray that stuff on my cross stitch because that stuff was intensely pigmented and scary. But look how it like washed out to like just a super subtle effect. So maybe one day I'll be brave enough to spray it on some cross stitch. Um, but I, today is not the day. <laughs> today is not the day, but maybe someday. So this is, this piece is still wet. Um, cutting off any like, I only saw one long scraggle on that. So I'm going to start drying this one. I don't know if you can hear the steam. So it, it steams itself. <laughs> um, ah, but I scorched. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see. I just got a scorch there. Um, it doesn't bother me terribly, but it's, it's a risk um, for sure with drying your fabric this way. So keep that in mind. Um, don't necessarily do as I say, <laughs> but usually, um, once you get past like the very first, like wet bit, then, then you can kind of hit it hard. So you just have to be careful with your first few passes. And then like your risk of scorching is, is minimal. <laughs> I didn't get a bad scorch. It's just, I don't even know if you guys will be able to see it, but I just scorched it a smidge right on that side. So this one is going to lighten up a lot and it's not going to be terribly, terribly modeled, but I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty modeling. So I'm actually, I'm really happy with these results. Like I said, I had no idea what I was going to get, how it was going to look. Um, this one's still really wet. So it's still got, it's still got a lot of lightning to do. So I don't know if you can see, but it's steam's coming right off of there. So no need to put the steam setting on your iron. It's steaming itself. Also, sometimes when it scorches, it can actually give it kind of a cool look um, as long as it's not like a distinct iron mark. It can um, just kind of give it like a little bit of dimension. But, uh, you know, I, I could be very wrong uh, with my method of drying my fabric with an iron. <laughs> Some of you out there might be going, oh my God, what is she doing? And that's fair because I don't know what I'm doing, but there are no rules. You can do whatever you want. So this is dry, but like I said, when it's dry, it's perfect. It's smooth. I don't have to worry about crazy wrinkles. I'm sorry, I'm really congested today. This time of year with the heat on, I wake up just like a hot mess every 
morning, so that's great. Okay, well, I'm happy. I had no idea how this would turn out. The only real disappointment to me is that um, it's just a little more subtle than I thought it would be or that I, than I wanted it to be. But I think they look they look really nice. Like I'm not unhappy with this fabric. Um, I think the biggest disappointment to me is that that green, that eucalyptus color, it's not coming through at all. And the other ones at the end of the day, I mean, they just, it's just brown. <laughs> really, it just aged everything a little bit brown. That's almost dry. Dry enough. It's dry enough that you can see the color. So let's compare. Now remember, this one, this one started as a cream and this one started as like a pretty stark white. So that's why this one's got a more golden tone. They were, they did not start the same color. L look how much that, that dye washed out. I'm not sure. And so I'll just look or, you know, I'll just decide what, what side I like better, but both really pretty, really subtle. Um, I would do it again, knowing that it's going to give a very subtle effect, but maybe, you know, maybe next time I would spray even more, like just really soak it. I mean, it looked like super saturated when I sprayed it, but maybe I would spray even more and see if I could, you know, I'd be curious if I could get some of that green eucalyptus color to, to show. So, um, maybe I'll try this again and we'll do that. But, um, here was our science experiment for the day and it turned out okay. All right. I'll see you guys later. So I'm getting ready to start my Christmas quilt. I am using these, uh, Jelly Roll Christmas fabrics from Joann's that I got last year they probably have something very similar this year, if not the exact same thing. Um, I'm using the Quilt As You Go Made Modern Technique. Um, highly recommend this book. And also, um, I did this quilt as a beginner. This was one of the very first quilt. It was the second quilt I ever did. And it was um, super easy. And I did great. So um, if you're a beginner looking to get into quilting, this book is great. She really does um, kind of explain everything really well about the method. Um, she has some um, YouTube videos as well. Um, there's one on Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, but I still recommend the book because she goes into more of the technique of how to actually put the quilt together after you do the quilt as you go. I'm going to be doing this uh, solstice parade quilt. Um, super easy. I'm going to make it bigger than um, the one in the book. And um, here's a, a better pick of how that, that looks. It makes uh, these nice diamonds, but I'm going to be doing it with the Christmas fabric. So um, these quilts come together really fast. Um, they are fun. And, um, you know, the Joann's fabric, especially in the pre-cuts, like the jelly rolls, it's not like top quality, but I feel okay about it because this is going to be a seasonal quilt where it's only going to be out for like two months a year. And, um, it's just, I, I don't need it to, to hold up and, and last with like daily use. So I feel okay with like using the cheaper fabric for it. So I'm going to get started and, um, I'll show you guys some of the blocks as they start to come together and, um, check in later. All right. So just about like one hour of work, maybe just under an hour of work. And I got six more blocks done. So you can see how um, the pattern starts to come together and how, um, you know, it's going to be a really cute quilt. Um, this is just, I just like really hastily laid these out. Um, if I was, once I'm ready to actually do the quilt, you know, I might play with these. I might play around with these quite a bit um, to make sure like I have a good balance layout, but you get the idea. So um, yeah, an hour's worth of work and we're we're not doing too bad. How about a little craft room tour? 
Um, so I'm not even sure where to start. <laughs> I have this shelf uh, up top and there is some cross stitch up here. So I'm not going to name all of the pieces because um, that would take too long and hopefully none of this makes you guys like, sorry, I'm a little shaky. Um, this is one that I've been meaning to re like frame. I mean, it's not framed. Um, since day one, I've hated the finish on that and that was a couple of years ago and I've just never fixed it. I really should. Um, so yeah, so there's the top shelf and then here's my bookshelves. Um, I'm apologize. There's a window right here. Um, and, uh, the lighting situation is a little wonky right here on this first shelf. So I have these, um, three bookshelves and I got these at Ikea and they were originally like 80 something dollars and they went on clearance for like 20 bucks. So I went and snatched them up. So I got these three shelves for like 60 bucks and they're, um, they're, I, I actually really like them. Um, I am so sorry. The, the light is super jacked up. I just dusted these, but you know, with the sun shining, you can see like every little bit of dust. Um, <laughs> all right. So there's the first shelf. And then here's our second shelf. So I've got random cross stitch, um, and other little tchotchkes on these shelves. So these are the shelves you usually see behind me as I film. And the, but you, you don't get to see the top. <laughs> you don't get to see the top shelves. Um, you usually only get to see about like to this height because I'm sitting on the floor when I film usually. Okay, so there's my, there's the tour of the bookshelves to step back so you can get a a good look um and then here is where I used to film is in front of these um little these are from Target these are the threshold storage cubes um and I used to just have the one the six there, there's two units side by side here. And I used to just have the one um, laying on its side. So it was shorter. And then you could see behind me um, all the cross stitch I had on top. But now, even if I film in front of here, the camera doesn't go that high. So you don't get to see all the goods anymore. So here are the goods. So back behind this lamp. <laughs> I've got this tucked back. Um, admittedly, you can't see all of these really well um, when I'm like just standing here, but it's fine. I still get a little bit of all of them. This is my Downton Abbey puzzle that I put together a long time ago. That puzzle was a total pain because they're all wearing cream. Yeah, not fun. Um, okay, so I've got my Stiach piece back there. This was actually stitched for me um, from a Harry Potter exchange by Audrey Stitchy Witch 42. Um, so I think that's, and then this one Amy stitched for me. So I think I stitched all the rest of them. Um, so my Thomas Kincaid Disney pieces. Those were a total pain. Um, so there's all of that. And then in this dough bowl here, I have all my smalls, like more smalls. Um, oh, I lied. I didn't stitch this one either. This was also a Harry Potter um, cross stitch exchange that I received. Um, but I did stitch the rest of these. So there is what's behind me in my videos. 
for anyone who was curious. Um, there is some other cross stitch in the room, so I will swing you around a little bit here. So here's the entrance to the room. Um, and then on this wall, I have hung up my Sawin and Salem piece and my Hocus Pocus piece, which these I had out in October in the other room. Um, and I just, I didn't want to put them away. I didn't want to put them away in storage or anything. So I didn't, I didn't put them away. I just hung them up in this room. And then the closet. Um, here is my rescued Mirabilia. So if you don't know the story about this, um, last Christmas, 2019, I was home in Kansas City. And I popped into a Savers thrift store like two days after Christmas, I think it was. And I found this, uh, this is Mirabilia Winter Queen, completely stitched. Um, it is stitched gorgeously. I still haven't fixed um, the mat. So this is a velvet mat and it is real jacked up. It's, it's nasty. Um, but this, the stitching in the, the linen is beautiful. So it's just this, um, it's just this velvet mat that got really damaged. It even looks like it got splattered with something, but none of it got on the stitching. And let me show you. So I did not stitch this. These stitches are so good. It looks to me like I mean, I almost wonder if she used like a laying tool because they're just so, so neat and just so perfect. And this isn't even an even weave, like this is a linen and it's got some schlubs. So for her to get like such precision with her stitches, um, it, it's just, it's stitched impeccably absolutely impeccable. I paid $7.99 for her. And then some more cross stitch. This is one of my designs. And then I think that's all the cross stitch in here except for doo -doo 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 -doo. right here. I've got these primitive hair pieces hanging up. Sorry, the lighting's not very good right now. Um, and then we're back over to the bookshelves. So there's a tour of the craft room and, um, yeah, just thought you guys might enjoy. So <laughs> I'm sitting on the floor. I forgot to show you guys, um, these bins that I have in front of my, um, shelves here. I always keep these here. So one is, um, one holds like all this stuff for my next floss tube. So like anything I've bought, anything I've been working on, any new starts, anything I've finished, it all kind of like is held in here. And then in the other tin, I usually have um, things that like I just, things on my radar, like things on my immediate radar. So it could be things I want to start in the next week or so. It could be things that... I am definitely going to start. It could be even um, things that aren't new starts. It could be works in progress that I just need um, to work on. And so I just don't want to forget. Like, I don't want to tuck them away and, and forget about them. Um, because in these bins behind are my whips and then, like, um, stash. Like, these are kitted up things. There's kitted up things here. This is all my fabric. This is, um, and these two are stash, not kitted up, just charts. All my floss is in here, all my DMC is in here. This is all my fancy DMC, all my dyeing stuff, and then more patterns. So I wanted to show you guys. Um, these are the things that are really calling to me um, that I'm hoping to start before 2021. But I'm realistically, I know I can't start all of these. Um, but these are things that um, 
made the top of the list. So I want to start this Whistle Stop Stitcher Designs Christmas Alphabet Sampler. This is a new pattern. This is new haul too. Um, and I have kitted it up with floss and fabric. So I want to get that started. I really want to start this 2020 pandemic sampler from Sarsi Girl. Um, this is just going to call for DMC. And I've got uh, weeks. I think this is weeks uh, 10 roof 40 count. And I've got all the DMC pulled for that. That I think I'm going to start pretty soon. Um, this I'm going to start very soon with my friend Matt, MBC Stitcher. This is Ink Circle's um, Dog's Declaration. We're going to start this like the first weekend of December, I think um, like December 4th or 5th. So that is coming up real soon. I've got all the called for Valdani floss for that. Um, and then with my friend Beth, I'm going to start uh, Lila's Studio Nevermore. I'm going to start this on December 13th for my Stitch Halloween 13. Um, I've got this kitted up with all the called for flats. And then I've pulled a color and cotton 40 count fabric for that. Liz Matthews. Um, hello from Liz Matthews. Quaker Snowflakes. So pretty. I've got this gorgeous color and cotton um, dark blue fabric picked for this. So I'm going to do this one, but it's just going to be on an even darker fabric than, than what that is. Um, oh, this is for the modern folk embroidery. Um, this is the, the 2021 stitch along. So it hasn't been released yet. So I don't have, um, I don't actually <laughs> have any have it where I can show you right now but um <clears throat> this is Fortnite fabrics um this color is caravan tan this is part of their permanent collection and I've got these two Valdani silks picked out for it so this is a 40 count so I'll be doing one strand and these are 20 meter skeins and so I think I did the math and I think I should have enough um to do this one over two on 40 count. Um, and so I picked these two complementary colors, but I'm not doing the fill in. I'm doing the second version, but, um, anyway, uh, uh, once that gets going in 2021, you'll see more of that. Um, these, I just need to, I've had this forever. I just need to do these this year because look how little stitching these are. It's so such a tiny amount of stitching. I need to just get them done. Um, this one, Stacy Nash, Moon Moth Pen Keep. Got fabric pulled for that. I'm just not looking forward to all this white stitching. Um, this is a Fat Quarter Shop um, stitch along that starts like January 7th or sometime around there. So this is coming up. Um, and I agreed to, um, join in with this stitch along. So I've got fabric and floss picked out for that. Um, the primitive hair, the old winter, and I've got this snowflake fabric for it. And I've had this in stash for ever. And I just need to get it started, get it going. Um, Darling and Whimsy HF1916 sampler. This should stitch up so fast. It shouldn't even take very long. I just need to do it. I've been wanting to start this as well. This is Ingleside Imaginarium, a lady named Ella. It's so pretty. I dyed some uh, fabric for it. I even went and found the crystals for it because I heard Swarovski was going to stop making crystals and I panicked. Um, this one, Primitive Hair, Pride and Prejudice. I had started this and I hadn't oriented my fabric right. Um, so I had to give it up and um, I've just never restarted it. And I really need to because I love it. And I'm really excited about the fabric that I pulled for it. So... So, just got done watching the Chiefs game. The Chiefs won. They beat Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
felt good. So um, this is how much stitching I was able to get done on Real Comfort during the game. I mean, obviously I was watching the game, but commercial breaks and in between like plays and stuff, um, I was able to get all this done. So um, I think that's a wrap on this for the Black Friday Stitch Along um, weekend. It's Sunday night and I actually am going to start a different project um, this evening which I'll show you guys um, so I think that uh, this is this is it this is our four days of progress which is not bad at all um, and then I think I know I said last night I wasn't ready to put it away but I feel like now I'm kind of ready so <laughs> take a little break I think who knows we'll see how I feel I think I'm gonna take a little break um, so there she is check in later all right I completed seven more blocks so it's coming together, but I'm actually going to pause, um, and, uh, go stitch. But, um, this was just a couple hours of work. I haven't, um, I haven't put a ton of time into this. So maybe like maybe two and a half hours of work. Um, so not there yet, but you can see this quilt comes together really pretty quick. Um, of course, none of these blocks are sewn together, so even once I have all the blocks done, I still have to sew them all together. But, um, these quilts do in my experience, um, become quilts quickly. So I'm so excited to get back to this soon, maybe tomorrow, uh, so that I'll have a, a Christmassy quilt for December. All right. I'll check in later. All right. So I'm getting ready to watch this movie. This is a new movie on Hulu. Um, it just came out, I think on Wednesday. I'm so excited. I've literally been saving this like all weekend as like my little treat before I have to go back to work tomorrow. Um, so many people I love in this movie, Audrey Plaza, Dan Levy, Kristen Stewart. So confession time. I love Kristen Stewart and I know that she's a polarizing character. I think you either love her or you hate her and a lot of people hate her and I absolutely understand the criticism like I get it I, I get like when people say what what about her drives them nuts I totally get it but I can't help it I love her I love her bad acting and all so I am so excited about this movie and I am starting a super special Hemlock and Rye, new pattern. Um, I don't know if uh, you can maybe, uh, maybe, maybe figure out a theme here. Um, a gay Christmas movie, a rainbow palette. I don't know. I'm um, it's a it's a small pattern. I'm kind of hoping I can um, possibly get it done during this movie. So we'll see. I'll check in when the movie's over. I'm excited. I can't wait. Okay, so I finished this movie. It was super, super cute. Highly recommend. Um, it's, you know, it's a holiday, it's a cheesy holiday movie. Like, just go in with low expectations. It's great. You know, don't, don't expect it to, like, blow your mind. Um, it was really cute. Really, really cute. I liked it so much. Um, I did not get this done, but I got some good progress. So, I don't know. I don't know if you can guess what this is going to be. Um, it's coming together, but uh, still a little bit left um, to do on this. So, um, you, will, you will see this soon. You'll see this really soon. Um, but this, I think, um, is going to conclude my uh black friday weekend or thanksgiving weekend black friday sale all the things um it's sunday night i i gotta take a shower and go to bed and go back to work tomorrow so that that's all she wrote turn this off i'll see you guys later thanks for watching bye Okay, so I hope you enjoyed 
um, getting to have, I guess, spend a little bit of like a day in the life with me for the four day weekend. Um, I actually had a lot of fun doing that, like kind of planning, kind of thinking about things I wanted to show you guys and um, kind of filming those little updates. Like I, I thought it was quite fun. So I might try it again sometime, but it's definitely um, like a special occasion format. I'm, I'm generally going to do like traditional regular videos. Um, so I did want to show you guys, um, I bought a couple of, I, I just bought um, some patterns from two people. That was it. So I bought M. Kissa Creations' newest um, pattern. So she released these really, really cute Christmas ornaments. This one is Santa Claus. And this one is Peace, Love, and Christmas. And then there was a third one and it was like a beach, like a tropical Christmas. And that one just wasn't like my, I, I've never had a, a tropical Christmas. So it wasn't calling to me as much. Um, but you can get these on her Etsy, Mkissa Creations. And then while I was there, I also got this dreidel pattern that she, she came up with this year. Um, it's called You Spin Me Right Round. And that's what it says. Um, you Spin Me Right Round. And there's a dreidel. Um, I am not Jewish at all, but I love this pattern and I loved the design when I saw it. And I was like, oh, I, I, I kind of want to stitch that, but I'm not Jewish. And she was like, I have no problem with you stitching it. Like, go for it. You do it. So she gave me um, her blessing <laughs> that I could stitch the dreidel pattern if I so desire. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to get to it like for Hanukkah this year, but, um, I mean, it, it should be like a really quick stitch. I just don't know if I can like fit it in the plans, but, um, anyway, someday, someday. And then the only other thing I got was, um, uh, Jennifer at Whistle Stop. Uh, she put out, I'm sorry, I printed it in black and white. She put out this, um, really cute Christmas alphabet sampler. And on hers, it's just like a, a pretty like beigey linen with a beautiful red floss. So um, I've got it kitted up and I, I actually showed you guys earlier um, in a clip earlier. I want to get this started soon. So that was all my haul. Like I was so good. I was so good, you guys. Um, but I wanted to talk about just a smidge about plans. I in my vlog, I showed you guys that bucket of things I want to start soon, right? Like things I wanted to, to, like things that were calling the loudest to me. And what I didn't really go into detail at that point was um, like kind of some plans I've made for 2021. So um, I've been really intrigued by the people who are trying to do no starts in 2021. I personally know that there's no way ever that I could pull that off. So I'm not even going to try to delude myself into thinking that I could do that. Um, but what I started thinking was, okay, like that's crazy. No way. But could I do like a m more moderate version of that? Like, could I do maybe no starts for like half the year? And then I was like, mm, no, I couldn't do that either. <laughs> um, and then what I finally decided was like, I really want to challenge myself. Um, I could say like no starts for 30 days, but that actually I don't think would be terribly challenging for me. I've, I've gone three to four weeks like without a new start um, before. So I don't, I don't think that's enough of a push. So what I think would be like adequately challenging for me, but not outrageously challenging um, to where I would just fail uh, is to do no new starts for 90 days. I think that that is like a nice balance for me. I mean, for any of you who are trying to do, to do no new starts for the whole year, like I am cheering for you. I am intrigued. I want to see it. Like show me in the floss tube. Like I want to, I want to know about it. I just know I can't do it. So I think for 90 days, um, it, it'll be hard, but I feel like 
it's something like I could accomplish. And then I, I just think like anything that's like calling to me like a desperate like I want to start that I want to start that like I just feel like I can hold out like a month or two and um and that'll be like a reward like you get to just you know wait a little longer and then you can start that like there's an end in sight it's not like an entire year so that's my plan and I'm gonna try to do 90 days no new starts 90 days start whatever you want 90 days no new starts 90 days start whatever you want but I'm trying like in the 90 days where I'm allowed to start things like I'm not trying to like go crazy and start like a hundred things I just um I still hope to have some moderation but um I just think that that could be like a, a fun balance and then for those 90 days I can really like focus on finishing things and like making progress on some of my like projects that need some love and attention so um all of that to say the reason i have really honed in on those projects that i have in my bin of like things that are calling to me the loudest um is that all of those have to be started by december 31st or i can't start them until uh april so um i don't believe i will start all of those in the month of December because I would have to have a new start like every other day to, to get them all. So I know I'm not going to get to all of them, but I do want to get to like a chunk of them. And then, you know, in April I could start more or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my plan. And that's why those are out front and center so that I can get those started before January 1st. And I will just also throw out that um, I am making a little exception for anything that I'm designing um, that I'm allowed to like model stitch um, and and have that new start on any kind of patterns that I come up with in that 90 days, um, which will probably be like one or two things. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what if inspiration strikes. So those are my plans um, for the immediate future, but they're subject to change and they might, they very well may change. We'll see. Okay, so that is all I have. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.